Hey everybody, and welcome to another devlog video for the RPG Enemy AI system. Um, I've gotten really great responses from you guys since the first video I showed. A lot of you seem to be very interested, um, and I've gotten some really, really good suggestions from you guys uh, via Discord. Specifically, just a few of you, you know who you are, uh, who are actually very much uh, helping me design parts of the system and giving me advice. So I really, really appreciate that. I love having that um, uh, help from the community. It, it, it helps me uh, figure out what, what you guys want, what would be useful. And also, if you, have, if you guys have experience with different games, obviously that helps a lot. So um, the past few days, I've been working on a more robust weapon system. If you guys saw the last video, it was a super short clip. I've added a disarm to the weapon, and that's cool. But there's a lot of additional things that uh, that needed to come with that. Um, so I was kind of thinking about what's the best way of implementing weapons uh, and making it meaningful that you can disarm your enemy, the NPC, right? So the first thought was, well, the weapon itself needs to have damage. Otherwise, if you just remove the weapon um, and it's just an aesthetic thing, uh, doesn't really matter, right? Uh, you need to feel that there's a difference. Um, so that was my first thought. And then I thought about, well, what about different hands? Do you want to disarm the right hand, the left hand? How do you manage weapons and the damage? And how does that calculate? So um, I tried a few things and I ended up making basically a weapon system uh, where you can now easily change uh, and manage your weapons for NPCs. And eventually you can probably do that with your player. So... Um, the first thing I added, um, not to talk too much here, is on the animations themselves. So if I, if I select this guy and I go to the melee animations, now there is an equipment requirement. And if I go here, you can see that now every single melee animation, you have to specify what kind of equipment requirement it has. So you can say this animation here requires a right hand weapon or a left hand weapon or either hand or this specifically requires no weapons uh, or it's always available and it's on the right hand and it's always available and it's on the left hand and that's what i have here by default so in other words what i'm doing is i'm categorizing all of the different animations when the game begins per npc and i'm saying based on the equipment slot I'm putting them in different buckets and then I look at the um, status of the NPC if he has any weapons and then I select from those abilities. In other words, if I select this first animation that he has to have a right hand weapon and then I disarm the NPC, then this animation will not play because you have no weapon. Or if, you, if there's a specific animation that requires no weapons, then it will only play that animation if the NPC has no weapons in that hand. Uh, or you can have the last two, which is always available. In other words, the animation can play with and without a weapon. So in this case, the first one is almost looks like a slap. I've made it uh, always available. And this is the right uh, hand. And then the third one here is always available and it's on the left hand, and it looks like a little slap. However, the middle one here, which is like the overhand, it's only available on the right hand, with the right hand weapon, and that has more damage. The base damage is different there. And the reason I'm explaining all that is because I'm gonna show you now what happens if I disarm the enemy, how the animations dynamically change, and the damage, by the way. Uh, so it's really, really, really interesting what you can do here. I've also created a data table to manage all of the weapons. Um, I looked at several examples and I thought about it. I didn't really want to go this um, complex, I guess, but it really is the easiest way to manage everything, right? So if you look at uh, some of the bigger packs out there, they do use um, data tables for items. So I wanted to do something similar because I think it's people are used to it and it's a bit best practice. So right now I just have three weapons that I've added for the NPCs, a troll hammer, an axe and a forge hammer and it's super simple right now all it has is a name its own actor class which i'll show you in a second and then either the static mesh or a skeletal mesh each weapon now is its own class 
So if I go here to the troll hammer, for example, right here, I can see, I'm going to open it in the full blueprint, that this weapon has a, um, skull, um, not a um, static mesh assigned, which is this um, uh, static mesh here. It has its own collision box, which is something I added last night. So that means that when you're doing the trace for damage, each weapon ha can have its own shape to match the size of the weapon. Uh, it can be bulkier, so you basically use this box collision and adjust it to wherever you want the weapon to do damage. And then you have certain stats, and you can see here when I click on the on the on the class, you have a name. You can specify its own attach rotation. This is going to be used to rotate the weapon on the socket. So depending on how you orient your weapon when you import it, you can change the attach rotation. You can also change the scale of the weapon. That way you can reuse it. So for example, um, if you can use the same weapon for a player uh, compared to an NPC or maybe a boss character. You just have to scale it up, right? Create the, a separate class and scale it up. And you can use the exact same weapon. Each weapon now has a weapon damage number here. And the way it works is now for the total damage that a melee attack does, you'll have a base damage for the attack itself plus the weapon damage times the damage multiplier of the NPC's level. So you have three different things that you can, you can tweak to change the damage that an attack is doing. And the reason for that is because now, obviously, if you disarm an NPC, then that damage of the weapon will not be applied. So there's a benefit now on disarming a heavily um, damaged, uh, you know, melee NPC because now you'll get a lot less damage, right? It also has an equipment slot, so each weapon can specify the specific slot. So just like the, the like the other um, animations, you can say this weapon can go in the right hand or in either in, in either hand. So you can say this weapon can only go on the right hand, for example, and it'll respect that. Um, and then you have the item uh, details, which is basically the reference to the data table. And this is going to be used on the NPC to pull the data from this class. Uh, so what it means is if I have this guy selected and I go up here, there's a new equipped weapons section and you have two hands, right hand weapon and left hand. And if I go to the right hand and I expand it, you can see that basically I have a data table and the row name and you can quickly select different weapons. And if I zoom in here, you can see that as I'm changing the, the weapons uh, from here, automatically the weapon is being uh, attached, rotated, and scaled properly. Just so you know, uh, this guy right here, if I just uh, show you, um, let's see, Forge. This is the original weapon, by the way. Look how big it is. And I pulled it from another NPC. But the weapon class for this guy has the scale to half and has the rotation to properly attach to the hand. All right. So that's what I mean with um, you are able now to use the same weapon in multiple contexts, uh, which is really neat. So let's go back to the axe. Notice also that the uh, collision box changes based on the weapon. You can see that it changes here. So you have a regular collision, which is right here. Uh, you can see on the hand. This is basically the trace that it will do when it doesn't have a weapon, but it'll automatically grab data from the weapon itself. In this case, this box here, and it'll resize the collision on the hand to match the weapon. So now you can have as many weapons as you want, and you can specify the collision per weapon, and it should be a lot more accurate. Um, so that's again really really neat um, and because we have individual classes per um, weapon you can always add more additional things on the individual class so right now is is just basic information but we can always for the future have a lot more information in it uh, and the last thing I'll, I'll show you guys and then I'll, I'll hit play and I'm talking a lot is that for abilities now so for my attack animation, this is the player. You have now the ability to specify a disarm on a per hand basis. So 
instead of just last time it was just disarm now I'm saying you want to apply disarm you can either say right hand or left hand or both and you'll notice that I have a percent chance for the effect to apply and I've added this to every single effect so I open stun percent chance of, of, of the stun applying and one is obviously 100% so again this is very much RPG uh, like right you may have an ability that has a percent chance to, to stun or disarm or whatever and this is the way you would do it right one is 100% so right now just to make a point I'm going to make the first attack disarm the right hand with a hundred percent chance and my second attack in the chain it will disarm the left hand and again with a hundred percent chance so remember i'm doing a chain and the first uh the first attack will disarm the the right hand the second will disarm the left hand notice i have it uh right now um on the left hand side you'll see the damage that the troll is doing to me notice how the damage changes when i disarm the troll ha! i'm gonna let him oh, no! No! Ah! right now damage is eight because that was the overhand attack oh, no! and it's gonna be the same ah! eight and that's in taking into account the weapons base damage oh, no! ah! Come on, of course it's random. Oh, no. This one is six, the one that's like oh, no. and that one that's disarmed is only two, oh, right? Uh, different damage. Ah. So now let's see what happens if I disarm. Oh, no. Look at the same animation. Looks like a little slap. Ah. Now it's only doing two damage because there is no weapon. Ah. It's the exact same animation. But it's doing less damage now because the weapon isn't there, right? The base, the base uh, damage of the weapon is four, and the base damage of the attack plus the scaling of the level. Uh, so that's that's pretty much it. Uh, notice now that we can quickly give him a uh, um, another weapon on the left hand side. So let's go ahead and give this guy I don't know the axe. And you can see immediately it goes to that hand. Remember the animation on the left hand side was um, unarmed, but it could also have a weapon. So if I click ah. right now, ah. you can see that with the right hand, he's doing eight damage. Ah. And again, it's ah. random, unfortunately. Kind of have to wait here to show you. Ah. Ah. Okay. Come on. I'm trying to show you guys the left hand side here. There you go. Look at that. 12. You see that? Uh, it did 12 damage because now it has the weapon. Same animation. This axe has a much higher uh, multiplier. 10. That's why you saw that it did so much damage, right? Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, you can disarm. And oh yes, the last thing I wanted to show you guys is that the AI now has the ability to pick up a weapon from the floor. Um, really interesting. So let me just show you real quick here. Oh, no. oh, no. Disarm. Oh, no. Disarm left hand side. And now he's completely disarmed. Oh, no. He can still use these two animations here because oh, no. He, I marked them as available, oh, no. but he's doing less damage. Notice oh, also no. that I have um, a floating combat tag. Oh, no. See that? Uh, very similar to World of Warcraft. You can disable that. I just added that for fun. So now you can see physically the damage that you're doing to the NPCs, and this ha and this is on an NPC basis on space oh, space. Oh, no. So. Oh. Four, six, ten, and you can see the progression there. Or if I, I come and do the, the, the special on him, that's 20 right there. Much more damage. Um, so that's pretty neat. All right, let's show you guys the last thing. Um, I'm going to remove the left hand. 
and there's another section here for search for weapon and this is very um, very similar to what you see in like Zelda Breath of the Wild and other games where if you disarm an NPC or it doesn't have a weapon it'll try and search the environment for objects right now it's very very raw um, you'll see what I mean in a second here but I'm basically doing a search a trace and you can specify the radius and the percent chance to search for weapon on a per attack basis uh, so I'm just gonna put this a little bit lower here in other words every single time the NPC tries to attack it, it'll see what percent chance it has to search for a weapon nearby and if it finds the weapon it'll grab it um, as simple as that and right now there is no animation there is no um, logic in the AI tree but but I do want to see um, and I'm going to oh I think I think I have the trace showing so let me just show you so if I disarm him you see he he did a trace and he grabbed the weapon again And he grabbed it again. See that? <laughs> so obviously, uh, it just pops into his hand. But the point is that I need to add the logic to physically walk to the weapon. And then uh, I need to have an animation for him to grab the weapon from the floor. But the point is, the most of the logic is there. So uh, my intention is that, and, and, and notice that you can enable it or disable it, and you can put a percentage here. So probably you'll want to have a small percentage here. But say that you disarm an opponent uh, and you're fighting, fighting, maybe there's a small chance that the NPC will run and grab the weapon from the floor. And I do intend this to be universal so maybe there's two or three NPCs in a group one of them is disarmed maybe that's the one that runs and grabs a weapon that's on the floor laying there because you can actually uh, drag the class on the floor the same weapon class and um, the NPC will go and grab it um, so yeah so super excited uh, I I think this the whole disarm thing came up uh, much better than expected I need to work on actually making the NPC walk to the weapon and grab it. But I do want to say that um, some of you guys are already helping me a lot. Specifically, one of you guys in the community is actually helping me with animations and uh, effects and things like that. So, a uh, huge, huge thank you to that person. I'm not going to say who it is, but you know who you are. Um, this is why I, I, I really love this community because you guys are uh, so willing to help and contribute. So, um, yeah, uh, the next thing after I'm done with this weapon uh, system, which is almost done, as you can see, it's going to be adding magic. And I have some really, really good ideas and examples on how we can create uh, a wide variety of spells for the NPCs that are doing magic. So. That's going to be a quite a complex system, but I think if it ends up uh, the way I have it in my head, it's going to be amazing. So, um, yeah. So, what do you guys think? Sorry, a little, little long of a video, but I wanted to show the different um, parts of the system. It came up more complicated than I thought, but it gives you a lot of gameplay possibilities. Uh, by the way, you don't have to disarm the NPC. Like I always uh, said, I think I said it last time, you can specify the um, um, effects that apply to the NPC. So you can come here and for a specific NPC say, disable the tick that says can be disarmed or feared or anything. Every single effect has a tick here for the uh, exception of knockback. And I think I should add that probably here. But the point is, uh, even if the player has that ability, you can disable it on a, on a, a specific NPC if you don't want that NPC to be disarmed or whatever, right? Say a boss, maybe you want a boss that is unable to be stunned, right? You don't want bosses to be stun locked, then you can just disable that. And even if I try to apply a stun, it will just ignore it because I don't have it ticked here. So a lot of flexibility here on how you want your enemies to react. 
um, and everything's kind of coming together very, very quickly here. So yeah, I'm still looking for examples. Again, like I said last time, uh, if you're working on an RPG, if you're working on this kind of game, I really want to hear from you what you're looking for as far as different systems and magic and melee and levels and whatever uh, to help me make this uh, the best that it can be. So thank you guys so much, and I'll talk to you in the next video.